Hello, I'm Dr. Joya Schoen. I have an integrative medicine medical practice in Winter Park, Florida. I'm going to talk to you today about ultraviolet blood irradiation. What is that, you say? Well, it has several other names. It's called photooxidation, photoluminescence. Um, that's enough names for now, right now. I first learned about it as a child. It's a treatment that was first tried in 1928 in Germany on a woman with sepsis who was about to die. The doctor, and she was a post-surgical patient, the doctor said, what are we going to do? They knew that the use of ultraviolet light has been used for sterilization. They thought, well, what might happen if we draw some of her blood out and pass it under an ultraviolet light and put it back into her body? So they did that. She pinked up and lived. They considered it a major miracle at the moment, and they were delighted, and so was the patient and her family. So it began to be used um, in the field of surgery. Many, pa many times the surgery was a success, and the patient died of post-surgical infection. This is before antibiotics, of course. So um, the first um, publishing of it in this country was in the annals of surgery which my father, who was a surgeon back in the 40s, read and began to use it with his patients. I don't know for sure, but I suspect he used it before they got the infection to make sure that they didn't um, have an infection. The day that penicillin and sulfur came out, whichever was first, I don't remember, Florida Hospital said, Dr. Lynn, take that machine out of here. We're going to use pills. So from that day till this, um, we've been using antibiotics, anti-infectives in mainstream medicine. Totally pushed ultraviolet blood irradiation aside because it is a bit more complex and uh, it involves an intravenous and all of that. Well, we've gone full circle. Many people now have such resistant bacteria that the antibiotics don't work anymore. We have seen a case, we've seen more than one case of MRSA reversed by the ultraviolet treatment. And we have recently seen a patient with probably a spider bite. She doesn't know who bit her, what or when, but it just never healed. She had this little wound and it just didn't heal. So, and it finally blew up into a huge um, ugly thing. She became quite frightened. And I had read in Dr. William Campbell Douglas' book called Into the Light about ultraviolet light irradiation detoxifying toxins. So I said, this is the one that we'll give you. After one treatment, the swelling was beginning to come down. She was heartened. She felt better. And she's had, now had an additional treatment, and she's well on her way to healing. I don't know if it treated bacteria. When she went to Centricare, they said, we think you have MRSA. We want to dig a hole here and clean this out. She really didn't want to do that. So she's taken our treatment, and she's really doing great. There are many indications for this treatment, and I thought I would read them to you because I can't keep them all in my head. It starts out that when a patient has reached a plateau, Photooxidation can often improve them further. Infections of all types, bacterial, viral, fungal, protozoa, toxic conditions of all types, snake bites or organic poisoning, injuries, wound healing, venous stasis ulcers, Raynaud's disease, migraine, acute flare-ups of arthritic joints, fibromyalgia, osteoporosis pain, diabetic retinopathy, macular degeneration, asthma, acne, herpes zoster, that's shingles, psoriasis, chronic intestinal inflammation, occlusion of arteries, including stroke, thrombosis, or increase in blood coagulability, thrombophlebitis, and general detoxification. Well, we didn't leave out a whole lot there. <laughs> Sounds like snake oil. Quite many years ago, I had a hepatitis C patient who came. He had taken interferon, and he just felt horrible. He had no energy, and he couldn't function, couldn't work. He had a family to support. And he said, do you have anything else I can do? 
I said, well, I would like to give you ultraviolet blood irradiation. And we'll see how that works. Well, he got increasingly better with each treatment, got his energy back, was able to go back to work and even work a second job so could afford to continue the treatments. It didn't take all that many, maybe five or ten, I don't remember now. And he was good to go, and he went forth, and I didn't hear from him for a really long time. And then when I went, went to write an article on this subject for our local Natural Awakenings, I had my staff call. I, he had a very unusual name, and I knew we could find him in the directory. We found him. He was still full of energy and doing fine. I'm sure he still had hepatitis C, the virus is in his body, but it stayed asleep. We, we all keep for our lifetime whatever, whatever viruses we've contracted. They don't kill us unless we have a very poor immune system. But when they wake up and are active, as in Epstein-Barr, which is a chronic fatigue virus, um, people will get very tired for no reason that they know of. This treatment or another oxidative treatment, we do three oxidative treatments in my practice. <coughs> we do the ultraviolet blood irradiation. We do intravenous hydrogen peroxide, which is sounds kind of weird since it's something we put topically usually. But in this case, we, we obtain from pharmacy a sterile dilute solution of hydrogen peroxide and it's infused into the bloodstream. A, f a very few treatments will usually um, reverse an activation of Epstein-Barr virus and the patient is well on their way to being back to good energy. So it isn't surprising that it would help um, a variety of different viruses to stay asleep. The other oxidative treatment is ozone therapy, where the bl about 30 cc's of blood is with, well, or more than that, is withdrawn. Uh, into a closed sterile system and, ex and infused with ozone and then put back into the body. Ozone is O3, so when it goes into the blood, it releases one oxygen and, and the blood turns much brighter red. Um, the patient is energized and it does similar things to what peroxide and ultraviolet blood irradiation do. So that's an overview of a different way to treat infections and a whole lot of other stuff that I read you a list of. If you really like to know more about it, the name of Dr. Buck Douglas' book is called Into the Light, and it's by William Campbell Douglas. He summarizes the research from around the world on the ultraviolet blood irradiation, which has been known for over a hundred years. So there's some new information on what to do for infections besides antibiotics.